Hallelujah to Jesus. I give God all the glory once again for the privilege to bring across your path, bringing this particular episode on the believer's health to you. I remain yours, Dr. Gwengawe, and by the grace of God, we speak on the believer's health on this channel. Before I go on, maybe you have listened to one or two episodes in the past on this channel and you are not yet or you have not yet subscribed, please do so. So that other episodes or other video uh, will reach you at ease. Again, I love you to share these things as it affects you and as it can affect others because I believe God is able to transform his church as we acquire the knowledge of, his, of the truth as concerning our health. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Today, by the grace of God, I am speaking to the topic titled how to maintain your health after healing. How to maintain your health after healing. Either you went to the hospital, either you had a faith healing, whatever approach that God has used to heal you. More importantly is your understanding of what to know and do in order to keep the health sustainable. People go to hospital sometimes every month, sometimes every quarter. Some people actually go there even every week until they are known as regular people to that site. They give them the same drugs. When that drug or when those drugs are, are, are not able to work again, when they have developed tolerance, insensitivity to those drugs, they change the drugs. Give them another set until even the doctors begin to say, we don't know what to do. But many times, this recurrence is as a function of you not knowing what more you ought to do to prevent the recurrence or to sustain the healing. It bothers me much more. It bothers me much more when people come on the altars in churches to thank God for healing them and now say that now I can eat anything and most times when they mention anything they mention the bad things that naturally must have caused what they suffered from and could cause it again and again. If you need to eat such things as situations when there is no option, maybe no problem. But when your intention is that, oh, I have I have I, I, I have I have over a long time missed drinking soft drinks, eating gala, eating this and that. All the things that would naturally not do well for health may be very tasty to mouth and desired on the tongue. Please, it is not the will of God that after he has healed us, that we return to those things. We will see scriptural uh, advice from Jesus. John 5, 14. 
after Jesus find findeth him in the temple, he said to him, Behold, thou art made old. See no more, lest a worse thing, a worse thing come on to thee. See no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Thank God we are not told the particular sin this man committed here or a set of sins he committed. But a sin is anything you do that is against the normal, the expectation. So whatever you do, including dietary things that are not supporting health, is a sin. I call them dietary sin. If your intake of soft drinks habitual intake of soft drinks, habitual intake of pastries, habitual intake of cold water, and many more have caused you a challenge. And you have suffered the challenge for a while. And in fact, the devil had manipulated around it the more. And God mercifully healed you. Thank God for the healing. Be grateful for the healing. Appreciate God that, oh, you are, you are freer to eat now. But in your freedom to eat, to eat, to, to take whatever you want, you should not include taking things that are not healthy for you. And it's not, it's not supposed to be an excuse that you don't know. Believers are victims of indiscipline with food as long as it is not tagged sin in the Bible. If you see a believer to a, a real believer, he may say that I'm not taking a call and it's not a sin as it were. But let me be sincere to us that you are not taking hard drinks does not make soft drinks healthy for you. The soft drinks, the so-called soft drinks, are highly carbonated, are highly uh, filled with unhealthy sugars, things that literally would deplete your health. Please share it with your friends. Tell your children. Say it. To your words, no matter how many hours of prayers, obedience to instruction will not be substitute. I mean, prayer will not substitute our obedience to instructions. In fact, sacrifices will not. The Bible says, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. So, get instructed. Get to know that God expects his children to know what is expected of them and to do so at the right time. That woman that was caught in the act of adultery, uh, of uh, fornication that the Pharisees brought to Jesus, Jesus also was not very free eh, to straight condemn that woman. As much as he had mercy, he was not also going to annul the law of Moses. All he told them is that let the man who had no sin first cast the stone on her. And before Jesus looked up, all the accusers were gone. It was actually Jesus alone that was qualified to stone that woman. Yet Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. If Jesus had just told her, Go, she could probably have returned straight to continue what she was enjoying before they caught her. 
But Jesus said, don't do it again. Don't do it again. I'm also saying to you, as a servant of the Lord, please note that what caused your challenge in the past, what caused your illness in the past, that God has hit you off right now, you ought not to return to them. Maybe you don't know them. Know now. You must be watchful on your diets. But much more than your diets, much more than your physical food, is your spiritual standing with God. Is your light illumination in the spirit. Many times, the devil wants to hide under the physical, empirical, medical reports. Oh, they have seen high cholesterol in your blood, and that is what is responsible for these observations you have in your health. Oh, they have seen free protein in your blood. They have seen high level of urea in your, in your, in your urine. All these things, they say it. These are, they are not, I'm not denying the realities of these things. But when they have caught something, either one or two or three things that are looking abnormal in you, the devil comes and hides under them. And when the devil is now doing his own several manipulations, you are explaining it with the medical reports. You are explaining it with cholesterol. When devil, when demons are oppressing you, Medical reports is justifying them for you. You better be smart. You better be smart. Smarter than the enemy. Smarter than the devil. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, what do we do? You remember Jesus said, when a man is delivered from evil spirits and is cast out, the evil spirit will go and... Uh, Maybe with time, he did not get another better place to stay. He will come and he inspect the house where he left. And if he found that where he left is just clean and not occupied, then he does not just come in again. He looks for several more wicked spirits to come and dwell with him there. It's not because he does not want to enjoy the monopoly of that accommodation. But he knows that for him to be secured in that accommodation, he needs stronger forces who can fight together to retain that space. So when God heals you, or after God has healed you, and you are not responsible, you are not conscious as to what to know and do, to sustain that healing, I'm telling you, it is not unscriptural to have a reversal of such healing. It is true, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14 says, Whatever God does shall be forever. Nothing shall be added to it, nor taken from, from it. God does that so that men can fear his name. If you have this understanding, if you have this understanding, it does not exclude you from knowing and applying the basic commandments of sin no more. It is your sin no more that brings sustainability to what God has done. Shall we continue in sin that the grace of God should abound? The Bible says, God forbid. Believers, it is the will of God to heal us, to make us whole. But before God will invest such time, power, anointing to heal you, He's also more interested in you knowing what and be ready to take responsibility to sustain the healing. You cannot be asking God to forgive your fornication when you know that you are still going to do it again and again. You know, not that you are falling carelessly, not that you are falling uh, unplanned. 
you know that you will still do it. God does not come to a heart that is not repented. Repentance means that you have known what was wrong, what caused your challenge, and you have made up your mind you will not do them again. It is that time that repentance is meaningful. It is that time that mercy can speak. I pray for you that God will help you, will help me. Every one of us needs God. Every one of us needs God. But God does not come to us when he has not first assessed our hearts and see that we are fit to sustain what is given to us. God does not want to be blamed that, oh, it is what I gave this man that eventually killed him. If God heals you and you use your healing against God, if God blesses you and use your blessing against God, then we are blaming God for doing so. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. My people, please, you add ulcer, and now God has healed you. Don't eat pastries. Don't go back to soft drinks because you are healed. You had diabetes and God has healed you. Don't go back to eating anyhow because God has healed you. Thank him for healing you. But also know and be ready to do the things that are going that are good for sustaining the healing God has given to you. In the spiritual, in the physical, we have responsibilities to take in order to sustain our healing. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please, love this, share it, subscribe, and make comments. I pray that the Church of Christ we will no longer be victims of the manipulations of the devil as we take responsibilities in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much and God bless you. Take charge.